Hello, this is Kevin Storter. I'm talking to you from our porch on this rainy summer evening. It was very hot just a couple hours ago, so we're very happy it's being cooled off. I'm glad you're joining us here uh, at the Kevin Storter channel. Um, I wanted to talk today about Stolpersteine. That's a German word that means basically stumbling stone when translated into English. So imagine if you're walking down the street and you're not paying attention and one of these things are on the ground, you might stumble on it or, you know, upon it. Uh, I won't get into the German translation very much of the context of it, but it's, um, uh, it's created, they have been created and now there are over 75,000 of them throughout Germany and uh, maybe about 80,000 by now. When I was in Germany 10 years ago, they were just relatively new. They've been around maybe five or so years. There was an active construction of them in the town of Wiesbaden where I was at. I walked to the neighborhoods and was rather impressed. Uh, what the designer, Mr. Demnick, uh, decided to do uh, as an artist was to create a different way for people to commemorate events that were tragic and need to be commemorated and remembered. So this is Germany we're talking about. And so starting about 20 years ago, uh, they began to place stones uh, like this that were actually uh, copper in color. And they would place them on the ground, on the ground in front of houses, buildings, or just open sidewalks or train stations. And they would be used to commemorate what had happened under the Nazis, particularly for whitewashing history, because the Nazis uh, uh, tried to wipe out memories of Jewish people, black people, uh, uh, Sinti, Roma, that would be gypsies, uh, handicapped people, and uh, whitewashing history means that people were growing up after this in a generation, generations, and they wouldn't be able to remember or or know, for example, a Jew. And this happened in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s. I lived in Germany in the 80s, and they were people, historians were just starting to really teach this in school and trying to make sure that kids had opportunity to investigate their own towns and cities. Students would be called on to do some research related to the Holocaust and uh, uh, this is something that I began to reflect on why it wasn't done in the United States and how necessary it was. Uh, and I, th I think today, now Stolperstein, the concept of stumbling stone should be imported here. Let me go uh, over a little bit of what would be on a typical uh, Stolpersteine. Uh, there would be engraved the person's name who lived in that house or, and uh, what they did. And when they were exported to Dachau or uh, some other place like Tweesienstadt, Auschwitz, Birkenau, uh, or sent off to some other death camp. Um, so you walk along city streets in uh, Wiesbaden and there are not more than dozens more than dozens, excuse me, more than a hundred, more than a hundred of these stones in this uh, stones in the central area, and I think that was uh, 2010 when I left Germany. So uh, I imagine they have triple or quadruple that many, telling the history of what happened in that town. So if you're a student and you're uh, coming home from school, you might stumble upon a stone. And the stone would reveal this is where uh, uh, a woman who happened to be Jewish lived, and she was sent to Tresienstadt. Uh, or you might see where uh, a Sinti and Roma community was, or a building where some lived. Uh, you might even find out where some black people lived and who disappeared in the 1930s or had to go into exile. Um, I'm it's good that they have the emergency sounds and it stopped raining here uh, because there was a lot of that. I would say uh, what we're facing in America now with all the statues coming down, it's a perfect opportunity to uh, take little stones, commemoration of uh, where uh, 
slavery homes were in America, uh, where slaves lived, uh, points at rivers where slaves crossed to try to get their freedom. Um, after that, we should also have uh, commemoration of where school buildings were uh, that were burnt down if they were black or if um, where people were hung where people were killed, where people were moved out of their houses. And it shouldn't just be one mem commemorating, but they should have a nice stone about this big with uh, the name of the person and what's missing. And maybe um, in this way, over many years, uh, Americans will begin to realize how pervasive the uh, racial culture was or racism of our society and how it's uh, embedded not just in our ancient history, but our modern history. You can include uh, uh, notations that this was a uh, white neighborhood and it became black uh, because the whites moved out or because such and such person, uh, J.C. Nichols, decided to uh, build something there. Or uh, other symbols where a police officer uh, mistreated somebody abuse power uh, and the person left but you would just have small stones rather than a big uh, statue to remind people you say oh there's another one oh uh, there's another one we see this uh, kind of symbolism in my neighborhood already and it's not about uh, things like slavery or discrimination but it should be I mean, this is Kansas City, and it used to be one of the places where blacks and, and Latinos lived in large numbers together uh, downtown in um, very bad conditions or west of downtown by the river uh, for th many years. And then around 1930, thousands and thousands of uh, Latinos were sent to Mexico, just put on trains, sent there. Uh, because uh, they were considered non-Americans, even though maybe some of them had lived there for generations. They just didn't have any proof that they were uh, born in America, maybe. And that wasn't uncommon for poor people back then, not to have their uh, birth certificates handy, even though they might remember where they were born um, or have been heard about it. The same thing for Native Americans. We could have Stoffersteiner for Native Americans. Here once lived a tribe. And so I want you to consider having these Stolpersteine, and I really appreciate uh, eight, uh, you thinking about it. Uh, just uh, so that we don't have monuments everywhere where we just see it or a park and it's named after somebody, but actually just walking around, oh, this is where once this person lived before they were kicked out of town. Or this is once where this person lived before something horrible happened to them, okay? Um, what I was gonna say is about commemorations. We do have commemorations, like this small ones, but they're, they sometimes are big, are bigger, and they're like this big. They are crosses. People put crosses where people are killed. And uh, in many cases in America, they just do it along the highway where somebody was uh, killed. But in my neighborhood, down at the park, uh, about a mile down the hill or less, uh, there's a cross and it commemorates somebody who was killed in a shooting. And of course that might be black on black violence, it'd be census violence. Um, but we could have other some sort of symbolism uh, for different people. Uh, we don't need to change the color of the stone, we could have the same color, it could be copper. Uh, it could be other material. In any case, I want you to be able to appreciate uh, your own history as you walk around your town and quickly grasp what once took place in the neighborhood. And your uh, kids in schools could do the research. Your historians could help them. Um, and then you don't have to have monuments they have to replace every few years, uh, indicating uh, that uh, something bad or good happened here. Uh, originally, when the United States was created, around 1776, the only statues that were found in most cities were statues of King George and his other kings of, of um, England. And they had these statues of King George. Uh, and of course, uh, three days, four days, five days after the uh, Declaration of Independence in, in 1776, 
uh, in Philadelphia and other places, they were tearing down these statues of King George. They did not want to have these memories. They melted down the, uh, the metal to make bullets for uh, used in the civil, uh, the Revolutionary War, and they were used to shoot the British, and the Americans were kicking out. Of course, uh, after that, we had another situation uh, where uh, George Washington and others of his generation really didn't want statues to leaders because of the how they could be misused uh, in our memory. And we should be a more um, uh, flatter society without these hierarchies of king and queen. It was almost uh, 30 years before uh, somebody politically minded uh, and powerful pushed through a George Washington statue that made George Washington look like Zeus. Uh, and they put that in the uh, Capitol building in the United States. So uh, historically, um, there's been revolutions and around the world and statues are toppled, not just in the United States, but in, in Iraq, uh, Soviet Union, you name it. And I want you to remember that if you have a Stolperstein doll, it might stay there longer, and it could be rediscovered later. Or people could go out from school and, and go, on their, go around their neighborhood and discover where they're at, and then they get a sense of the history. And then they could demand other Stolpersteins be built if some other part of history has been neglected. Uh, in any case, uh, Stolpersteins uh, are about this big. Uh, and you put them in the ground, and you write what happened there. Uh, you could say the uh, Huron tribe was forced to move from this settlement on such and such a date, or uh, this Indian tribe was uh, mistreated and given a treaty that was later turned over in this location. You can do these big things and, and think, uh, but if you have enough of these in the city, you get a better idea of your geography. Um, the Germans, again, also started uh, creating in downtown Berlin when I was there in the 80s, the topography of terror, topography of terror, and they used that as kind of a symbolism, too, of saying we need to make sure people understand in the neighborhoods what happened. We can put nice uh, memorials on the walls sometimes, but we, if we have a good mix of our history, people can be walking down the streets, traveling the roads. Uh, doing research in their neighborhood, uh, sharing with the friends and say, oh, I know that where that one is, it's over there, and it represents my great-great-great-grandpa. Or maybe it doesn't, but uh, it's part of my heritage. And you're glad to share it with your kids and neighbors. All right, just like I'm concerned about that cross down in the park, um, I think it is important to remember people and not to hide it away. Of course, if you want to hide things away, uh, that could lead to more hidden history uh, but we do need to be respectful in the meantime thank you for considering my story about Stolpersteine that I've seen in Germany uh, in, over the last 20 years and I think we should import the idea in the United States put small stones around the cities and let people know their neighborhoods take them on tours of the Stolpersteine and uh, you know, maps and everything, uh, that would be very helpful. The same thing could be even for regional areas. Uh, maybe they can use uh, geo-satellite locators to help you find things and plant them in the wilderness uh, of the United States, too. They wouldn't take up much room in a national park, but they could indicate where the tribes used to live here and uh, indicate that uh, they were forced to move from this area at such and such point. In any case, we don't have to just do the negative history, but I think uh, we can move away from statues and we can have uh, an idea of how pervasive history is if we put down smaller monuments, as I said, all over the city uh, and towns and country and, uh, and we stumble upon them. Or we go out and search as an educational group and share with our students to them. Thank you for listening to this. This is Kevin Stoda Channel talking to about Stolpersteine or stumbling stones, a German concept used to uh, go over the horrible history of the Nazi era with modern people uh, in their towns by using small stones like this uh, with 
maybe copper or bronze over them to, uh, with a short statement indicating who lived there, what happened, or what, and, and uh, seeing that history is not just about statues or naming a park after somebody or a road after somebody, but it's a place, thing you can walk from one to the other and piece together your own neighborhood's history. Okay. We thank you for uh, sharing uh, this with your friends. Uh, become a member, subscribe to this program, and please give us thumbs up. All right. Thank you for listening. Bye.